Welcome back to the channel, guys. It is me, AD744. So today, guys, we're joined by Rank, and today we'll be previewing the Copa America final. We were going to have a Colombian friend of mine join. Unfortunately, he had um, family emergencies and stuff, so he wasn't able to join. So we're not going to have him, unfortunately. And yeah, so uh, thank you for joining Rank. Obviously, you guys know Rank. He's been a long time uh, uh, person on my channel. He's been here for so long. And, uh, you know, I think what was the first time you came on my channel? Actually, I think it was like 2022, right? It was uh, June 2022, yeah, for your uh, preview for Argentina when we qualified to the World Cup. Yeah. Yeah, I just realized it's been like pretty much about two years, uh, almost uh, pretty much been two years. So, yeah, over two years now. Yeah. 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 Two years and a month. So, yeah, thank you for joining Rank. Uh, and so, like I said, guys, let's go ahead and start with the. Uh, we're doing a Copa America final preview, guys. So uh, let's start with the let's start with the first uh, question for you, Rank, and that is, what were your pre-tournament expectations for Argentina? Obviously, I knew I know you probably expect Argentina to make the final, but uh, were you surprised at the manner in which they made the final? Because I feel like it's not surprising, but I feel like the performances it wasn't as dominant as I would have thought. I suppose is probably a better way to put it. Um. I guess you can put it that way. Uh, my pre-tournament expectations was that we should be making the final, looking at the uh, teams that we were going to, we were going to play on our way to the final, because you know the the draw was pretty kind to us in that regard. Uh, so pre-tournament, I was expecting us to reach the final, and in my predictions, I also had us winning the entire thing. Uh, but I think that the minimum expectation was to make the final and i think we've met that um if we had gone out to say ecuador or uh, canada i think that it would have been fair <laughs> to uh call that a failure because reaching the semi-finals or the quarterfinals is not in itself a failure but going out to a team that is like that inferior in paper is a failure so i think that now we've gotten the, at least to the stage where if we lose the final i don't think you can call that a failure right uh so we've gotten past that um, and yeah, I guess my expectations were met, but like you said, it wasn't as dominant as one would have imagined. Argentina is not a team that usually uh, scores a lot of goals. Like it's during uh, Scaloni's tenure, it's been very weird that we've scored more than three goals in a game. So I was not expecting us to destroy everybody, but I was expecting us to dominate the games. And during these Copa America games, we've actually been conceding quite a lot of chances, especially like against uh, Ecuador and Canada. Uh, so in that regard, I think it was a bit surprising. And we're going to talk about why I think that is a bit later on. But um, we still got the job done and we are where I expected us to be. Yeah, now we look, <clears throat> now we look at the other side of the bracket. So. Now, I imagine before the tournament, obviously, um, you probably know this better than I do. I believe most people expect Uruguay to make the final. Am I correct in saying that? Yeah, I think the most popular choice for the final was uh, Argentina Uruguay before the tournament. Yeah. <clears throat> so the fact that Colombia made the final, I think, were they like, I think, I don't know, I don't know, maybe you know this better than I do. Um, was Brazil more picked or Colombia more picked to make reach the final? I think that overall, like in terms of raw numbers, uh, Brazil was more picked uh, to make the final, just in terms of their history. But among people who actually um, watch the games and know about football, I think that <laughs> Colombia was more picked uh, to make the final than Brazil. I think that everybody who actually has been watching uh, both of these teams play over the last year and know that Colombia have been performing a lot better than Brazil. Uh, in the qualifiers, in the friendlies, and in the Copa America itself. So I think that it was not a surprise that Colombia made the final. I had them in the final uh, in my own prediction, so this is the final that I predicted. Um, but like I, I do think that Uruguay was the most popular pick, especially because they beat Brazil, they beat Argentina, they play such beautiful football, so dominant in the qualifiers. Um, but Colombia are the most consistent team, and I think that this final, in a way, is a reward for consistency because both of these teams have been the most consistent teams, I would say, in the world uh, around this time because Argentina has only lost uh, two games in the last, like, 60 games and Colombia is in a 28-winning, uh, uh, I guess, unbeaten streak. So 
it, it is the two most consistent teams that have made the final. So it's not like a huge shock that Colombia has made the final ahead of Brazil or Uruguay, but I wouldn't say that they were the first choice uh, in all of the people's radars. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. I also picked Colombia to reach the final as well. So RG Colombia. So we both got the final. Um, I'm going to ask you one question before we move to the next question. Are you happy that are you happy that Colombia made the? Are, do you think this is the best foul we we could have got this year in the Copa America? Uh, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I think that, like I said, this is a reward for consistency. These two teams have been the best for a long period of time, and they are teams that very rarely flounder or go below expectations. We see teams in Europe that uh, sometimes, even though they have great quality, great individual talent and that they can play amazing football that they tend to underperform at times. Argentina and Colombia are two teams that over the last few years very rarely underperform. So I think that this is a reward for consistency. And yeah, I think that we were a lot more convincing than Uruguay and Brazil in that regard. So uh, I, I do think that this is probably the best final we could have gotten in terms of how both teams play uh, against Brazil or Uruguay. I feel like we would have had a guaranteed uh, a battle like a dog fight in the final and against Colombia even though I still expect the game to be very physical uh, there is a chance that we actually get to see some football uh, on the day so <laughs> that, I, I think it's uh, it's the best for for the fans as well that these two teams made the final man I am so glad we didn't get RG Brazil final I am so glad I didn't get we didn't get this that would have been terrible um, RG Uruguay I, I, I am Maybe could have been ugly, but I, I feel like, I don't know. It's hard to say, but I, I know for a fact RG, I know RG Brazil would probably be the, the worst case final of the three. Hmm. So, yeah. Okay, now I think this segues nicely to how are you feeling ahead of the final? Hmm. Uh, I'm pretty anxious. I'm pretty nervous about it, obviously. Uh, I think that it's going to be an amazing game, but I'm feeling like a lot more positive than going into the last Copa America final. Obviously, uh, in 2021, we had to play against Brazil in the Maracanã, and Brazil were pretty much, for everyone, they were favorites going into that game. And, you know, we, we were on a 28 drought, 28 year drought without winning a single trophy. So there was like a lot of pressure to finally get something done. And if we didn't win, it would have been another soul crushing final defeat. Uh, I had good expectations of that we were actually going to compete. Um, I, I didn't know if we were going to win, and I was like very nervous about it. Uh, going into this final, I have a, a lot of confidence. I'm feeling great. Um, obviously, the nerves and the anxiety are still there, but I, I still think I'm very excited. I think it's going to be a, a great final. And, you know, if, if we win, it, there's only positives because it's... Uh, it's a legacy defining history for, for the national team and for these players who would complete the dynasty of going Copa America, World Cup and Copa America, which is something that no national team has ever done. And the only national team that has done something similar was Spain when they did Euros, World Cup and Euros. Uh, so it would be a, a historic achievement for sure. Um, and yeah, it would be incredible. If we were also We would also go as the team with the most Copa Americas as we would reach 16 trophies. So it would be historic in every single uh, meaning of the word. And if, if we do lose, you know, it, it would be crushing. I would be devastated. But I feel like at least we would lose to the best team, which I think Colombia have been at this Copa America. Um, and also like losing to Colombia, which is a team that I, a nation that I feel deserves a lot of uh, credit and they deserve to reach glory once again. They've only won one Copa America. Losing to Uruguay or Brazil, who are like known rivals, would have been a lot worse. Losing to Colombia wouldn't be that bad. I would I feel pretty happy for them. And, you know, I would still uh, give a lot of praise to the, our players because uh, they are doing something fantastic, which reaching finals like this is not something common. So I would still be incredibly thankful to them for what they did in the previous Copa America and obviously the World Cup. Uh, so even though it would really hurt to lose this final, I feel like I would, could still have a lot of positives and be very thankful to our players. You know, the way you're kind of describing it, it almost kind of feels like the last Copa America final. So, like, you know, Col uh, Colombia came, Argentina came into that final. We all expected Brazil to win. Do you think it's kind of like the same kind of this time around? Like Argentina kind of like Brazil in the last Copa America and Colombia kind of like Argentina or 
am I just like making stupid comparisons? <laughs> um, I, I I don't think it's a stupid comparison. I I can see some of the correlations. Obviously, I think that Argentina, based on what we've done in the past, should be the favorites because you know we've been here before. We are proven that in the finals we can obviously get it done uh, against Brazil, against France. Uh, against Italy, if you want to count the finalissima. So, like, uh, it's pretty clear that Argentina are a battle tested team and that we know how to handle these situations. And that, you know, the fact that we've made another final is a testament to our consistency. So, I would say that probably Argentina are the favorites. Obviously, then, if you look at the individual players, you can also say that you would take more Argentinians in your uh, combined 11 or something. But th those are just nuances. Like, uh, I don't think that it would be a shock if Colombia were to win the final in the way that they've been playing. They've been super consistent. They've done it against tougher opposition, in my opinion. And even I think that now also they are battle tested because they had an, a, a game that felt like a final against Uruguay and they came away from that brilliantly, like down to 10 men, defensively super solid as they hit when they needed to. So I think that Colombia is also a team that is battle tested now. So I wouldn't call it a shock if Colombia were to win. Uh, I think that Argentina can consider themselves the favorites, but uh, Colombia have been playing arguably the best football of this Copa America. So it wouldn't be a surprise if they were to win. <clears throat> yeah, one last thing before we move to the next question. <clears throat> There's also the <clears throat> excuse me. There's also the fact that uh, you haven't played Colombia. The qualifiers concern you ahead of this final. Hmm. Well, that is something to consider because obviously, uh, like you were saying, these qualifiers, we haven't played Colombia. We haven't played Colombia under Nestor Lorenzo. The last time we played Colombia was actually the last time that Colombia lost in the qualifiers ahead of Qatar 2022, all the way in like, what was it? Uh, September of like 2022 or maybe a bit further back, but it was in 2022, the last time we played Colombia, we beat them 1-0, a uh, goal from Lautaro uh, in Argentina. So, like, it was uh, a very different team. That Colombia was on a seven-game without scoring streak, and this Colombia team is playing some fantastic football. So it's a much better uh, team than the one that we faced last time. So I, I would say that it worries me a bit in the sense that we haven't really been tested against this exact same Colombia team, but I trust that Scaloni always does his research properly and analyzes teams very, very well with his staff, with Aymar, with Samuel, with Ashala. So I, I wouldn't be that worried in that regard. Like he does his homework. We saw it in the World Cup, even against teams that we had never played before, we managed to dominate them. So I think that if Scaloni and his staff do his homework, it shouldn't be a problem that we haven't faced them before. Yeah, that is true. All right, let's move to the next. Uh, let's segue nicely to the next one. Uh, what is your 11? So, um, obviously, I think you're going to start. Uh, so, what formation is RG going to go with in this final? Um, so, we are either going to use 4-4-2, pushing the wingers forward or a 4-3-3, which is probably the formation that people are more accustomed to seeing in Argentina. I suppose the easier way to explain it would be like the 4-3-3. The uh, so that would be the formation. All right. So let's go through it together. So goalkeeper, Emmy Martinez. There's, <laughs> I'd be yeah, surprised absolutely. Emmy Martinez doesn't play. <laughs> absolutely. No doubt about it. Uh, Emiliano Martinez is going to be the goalkeeper. Uh, no one is close to his level, even though we have other good goalkeepers in Argentina. He is just the best we have. There's a discussion that he's the best Argentine goalkeeper in history at this point. Whoa. So, uh, and that is a conversation that is out there. And if he wins another Copa America, I think it's going to be pretty hard to argue against it. Um, so he's definitely going to be the, the one in goal. Yeah. And then left back. Now, left back is interesting because I don't think there's a clear out and out stand. I, I think I think there's a bit there's a bit of a debate here. So there is a bit of a debate um, during this Copa America. Uh, sadly, Marcos Acuna has been dealing with a bit of an injury, so he hasn't been playing. I know he's fit now and he was fit to play against Canada as well, but he didn't do so. Scaloni still went with Tagliafico. Um, 
And I think that for this specific final, considering that Tagliafico, the only two games that Tagliafico played in the World Cup were the semi-final and the final. So it seems like uh, he's a bit of a big game player for Scaloni. So I would say that Tagliafico is potentially going to start in the final, especially now that Acuna is coming back from injury. Um, there is potential for Acuna to start or at least uh, get subbed in during the game. But for now, I think that Tagliafico is the one who is more likely to start. And do you agree with that decision? Yeah, I, I think it's a correct decision, yeah. All right. <clears throat> Center backs, I think this is easy. It's it's, it's Romero and Lissana Martinez. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, would you agree? Yeah, I, I would agree. Uh, at, at the start of the Copa America, I was a bit surprised to not see Otamendi and Romero like we saw at the World Cup. Um, Scaloni kind of did that last minute adjustments. We had seen Lisandro play in a few friendlies, but it was like the first time that he was starting official games with Argentina, um, but he did so brilliantly. Um, Lisandro and Romero, I think, have been two of the best players of Argentina this World Cup. Their partnership together is just so insane. Uh, they are great in their timing, in their vision of the game, their intuition, uh, their challenges are mostly clean. So I think that they them too is are going to be like the, the spine of this team. And there was a stat out there that both uh, Tagliafico, who we talked about before, and Lisandro Martinez haven't gotten past, uh, haven't, haven't got dribbled past once this Copa America. So it's wow. a, a very good stat there that it shows just the defensive capabilities of those two players. And Christian Romero, who has been like arguably your best defender as well. So I, I would say that it's pretty cemented that they're going to be the back line. Yeah. And then maybe Otamendi might come in, you know, like as a substitute potentially, uh, mm -hmm. something like that. But yeah, uh, <clears throat> right back. Ooh. Right back is interesting. Right back is interesting because at the start of the Copa America, obviously we were seeing Nahuel Molina. Molina uh, played a huge role in the World Cup, huge. Um, he hasn't had the best season with Atletico, to be fair. And I think that he was also getting a bit exposed in the first few games of this Copa America. And that prompted uh, Scaloni to play Gonzalo Montiel instead there as the right back. And I would expect uh, Montiel to start in this final as well. In the last Copa America final, we also saw Montiel uh, start to kind of deal with Neymar. And, you know, Neymar was a beast in that Copa America, but Montiel was able to prevent him from going down that uh right hand side uh, Neymar had to come through the middle a lot so I think that we could see a similar situation here where Scaloni pairs up uh, Montiel against Luis Diaz and tries to defend that way so I think that the starting right back is going to be Montiel yeah I think I'd probably agree as well uh, <clears throat> let's let's move to the midfield <sighs> the the midfield is very interesting because I think that the midfield has probably been Argentina's weakest point at this Copa America. And I think it has been the reason why we have struggled a bit in, in this tournament, why we have considered like that many chances. Uh, it's because in the midfield looks disconnected, doesn't seem to have uh, that same chemistry that we used to have. We are missing a lot of passes in that area and it's allowing teams to recover the ball and hit us in the counter attack or something to like um, yeah, just basically get their chances. So the midfield is a big debating point. Um, there are not many, there's not much information as to what is going to happen with the midfield as of now. Um, but I, it, since there is not much information, I think it's very likely that it stays the same, that we're going to see uh, Enzo Fernandez moved uh, to the CDM role where he worked a bit better than uh, in the eighth as we saw against Ecuador, against Canada, he played again as the six. So I would expect Enzo Fernandez to take that position. And the two other CMs would be Alexis McAllister and Rodrigo De Paul, who I think has been once again Argentina's best midfielder at this tournament. Yeah, I think, um, I th <clears throat> excuse me, I think you would probably agree that Enzo's probably been the worst midfielder of the three, right? Yeah, yeah, I think that McAllister overall has been pretty quiet. He had a a good game against Ecuador in the quarterfinals. I gotta give him that. Yeah. But uh, as for the rest of the games, McAllister was pretty quiet. And so, yeah, I would agree that he's been the the worst uh, of the three midfielders. And that's why there's potential for someone like Paredes or Lo Celso to slot in, or maybe even Palacios. 
Um, so I think those will be some of the options that Scaloni must be considering as a potential backup. But since there's, like I said, there's not been much information of any changes on the midfield, so I expect it to stay the same. And I wouldn't blame Scaloni for it, honestly. Um, I Paredes and Lochelso are two players that I absolutely love for the national team, and I would love uh, to see them get more minutes. But, you know, if Enzo does the job for Scaloni, I don't see a reason why he should come out of the 11. Um, if I were to choose who would play in that position, I'd probably go with Paredes. But I'm not really, you know, Paredes can be like that destroyer in the midfield. He's more of an yeah, natural yeah, he's DM. Uh, he has good passing. He has long range shooting. So Paredes uh, adds a bit of everything to the team. But... Um, if that doesn't happen, I'm completely fine with Enzo starting in this game. He's a lot. Uh, he's very proven as well, so I, I wouldn't be against it. You know, it's just that Arch's midfield is so stacked that you have so many options. Like most national teams don't have this kind of depth, so like mm -hmm. it's really hard. You know, um, obviously Nepal is going to start. There's no way he's not going to start. He's like you know so essential to this team. He does the pressing. He's he's so essential, and he's like the bodyguard essentially for Messi. You know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let Let's move to that attack. So, you know, well, it's going to start. The attack Deep is going to be exactly the same. And yeah, Di Maria is going to start um, because it's going to be his final game for the national team. No, no matter what happens, uh, he's going to say goodbye. And it's going to be a very emotional moment um, because after everything he's gone through with the national team, uh, he had, you know, a, a very, very bad moment throughout his career with the national team in you know in 2014 getting injured against belgium and not being able to play in that final against germany 2015 getting injured against chile in the final 2016 he was not able to deliver again and you know many people were very critical of di maria but in the at the end of the day di maria is going to be one of the legends of the argentine game uh, scoring in so so many finals uh the olympics in 2008 the Copa America in 2021, the Finalissimo in 2022, and the World Cup in 2022. So he has four uh, important goals in finals to win Argentina those trophies, which were just so, so crucial. So he he has been one of the talismans of the national team. He also has a lot of other memorable moments, like his goal against Switzerland in 2014, uh, his goal against France in 2018. So like he, he seems like someone who... It's incredibly underrated and yet he's always been there for the national team so it's going to be a very emotional moment in like his final game here um and you, we just have to await if he has one more magical moment in a final for us which would be uh what we want to see the most obviously and the partners in the attack i don't think they're going to change i think it's going to be julian alvarez and Lionel messi playing in this one uh, messi we saw against ecuador that he clearly was not fit uh, he was. He did not have a good game. He was pretty invisible in that one, and you could tell that he wasn't really fit for the game. Against Canada, we saw uh, again the best of Messi. We saw him more relaxed. He was not in his own head as much, and he was able to. Uh, people are going to say that I'm, I'm saying this because of the goal. No, the goal was pretty lucky for Messi to get it. But in the game, he was also a yeah, lot yeah. more involved. Uh, he was doing more passes. He was. Yeah, a lot uh, more chances. He, yeah, finding the pockets of space. So Messi was a lot more involved against Canada. So I expect Messi to be fully fit for this game and to have another great performance. So there's no way that Messi is not going to start and he's going to play the entire match as well. And Julian Alvarez, I think it's going to start. Uh, obviously, he had a great game against Canada. Uh, he showed again why he's so important for this national team with the pressing, his off the ball movement, his link up play. So everything about Julian Alvarez is great in that aspect. And that leaves room as well for Lautaro Martinez to come off the bench and make an impact if needed. So uh, those are the options in the attack for sure. Yeah, um, very. Uh, I think the only thing that's been a bit missing with Messi in the last game was the finishing aspect because he should have some of those chances he should, probably should have scored. But as, as as you said though, he looked a lot better than against Ecuador. Ecuador didn't look great at all. So, yeah. All right. Now the segues nicely to who should we look out for the opposition? Oof. Um, well, I'm gonna go for the obvious and most boring names uh, out of Colombia. 
because I feel like they are truly the ones who can cause the most trouble. I think that Luis Diaz is going to be a threat. In the last Copa America, he was. He scored the equalizer against us in that semi-final game. And oh, yeah, it was I remember. pretty much like a solo run goal. It was so insane. So, like, obviously, I think that Luis Diaz is going to be a threat, especially in this Copa America, where it feels like our fullbacks have gotten a bit exposed, uh, mostly on that right-hand side. Molina, I think, was having a pretty tough time against trying to defend against opponents in this Copa America, against Canada, against Ecuador, like Jeremy Sarmiento, Schaffelburg, these type of players who are dribbling past our players. And I think that Luis Diaz is, uh, has much more quality than those other players. So I think that Luis Diaz is going to be incredibly threatening and we're going to have to figure out a way to, to stop him. A lot, of, uh, a lot of teams against Colombia, what they've been doing is just double teaming uh, Luis Diaz, but that obviously comes with the risk of a teammate being uh, free with no mark. So we're going to have to see if Escalini decides to go for that or, or if we're going to have another approach to marking Luis Diaz, but something is going to have to be done there because he is such a threatening player. And obviously the other one is James Rodriguez. Uh, James, James who, Rodriguez. Yeah, he's been the best player of the tournament. He's got six assists, which is like... Six assists. Uh, yeah, the the most assists in a single Copa America. He took that record away from Messi, who in the last Copa America had five assists. So, wow. Uh, yeah, James has had a stellar Copa America and he's been the MVP of the entire competition as well. So he's going to be incredibly threatening. Uh, Colombian, the set pieces are going to be very, very dangerous. Uh, they've scored a lot of set piece goals and all that comes off the great crosses that James is able to put into the box. So James is going to be a player that we need to take uh, a lot of you know respect to and we need to mark him well to make sure that he doesn't get a, a lot of space to show his creative output. So I would say that those are definitely the two most dangerous players, but there are others there like John Arias, John Cordova has been having a good tournament. Richard Rios is a player that I absolutely love. Jefferson Lerma we have to take care of, but I think that it's clear that James and Luis Diaz are going to be the two most threatening players from Colombia. Yeah, um, maybe also, uh, maybe, uh, maybe also Davis Sanchez with the header. Potentially. Mm. potentially, potentially, potentially. But but like I said, uh, the, in the set piece aspect, it, it all yeah, comes set piece very good. of yeah, yeah, uh, James, James. James being so great with his crosses, so accurate. Yeah, um, is Richard Rios going to be back for the final? Because I know he got that bit, a bad injury against Uruguay. Do you actually know the time of this morning? Uh, as a time of recording, I don't know, um, but you know that. There was uh, the the celebrations of the Colombian dressing room after the win against Uruguay, and Richard Rios was like just jumping around and stuff. So I was like, "Wait, is he really injured? Like he looks yeah. fine." <laughs> what? No, like, Wait, what the heck? <laughs> yeah, no, like uh, obviously he had a knock against Uruguay, and he had to be subbed out. But I, I think he he looks fine, and that he's gonna play in the final. I don't know if he's gonna play the full ninety minutes, but. Uh, he's obviously such an instrumental part for for Colombia and for Palmeiras at his local club. So I think that Richard Rios is a key aspect of how what makes this Colombia team so good. So I think he's yeah. going to be fit for the final. Oh yeah, I just remembered that Munoz guy. He's going to be suspended for the final. Are you happy with the suspension? <laughs> uh, I, I guess I should be happy because uh, Daniel Munoz, I would say, has been the best right back at the Copa America. He's been great both defensively and going forward. Uh, and for Colombia has been so incredibly important, not only this Copa America, but in the qualifiers as well. At Crystal yeah. Palace, he's showing his quality for the world to see, but previously he was doing it for Genk in the Belgium League. And he's been super instrumental at every single club that he's been in. And yeah, him getting that stupid red card against Uruguay is obviously a, a massive blow to Colombia's defense. Now they're going to be playing uh, Santiago Arias as their backup right back, and it's simply not as good. I think that he looked pretty okay in that second half against uh, Uruguay. He didn't really get a dribble pass, so I wouldn't say that he's a liability, but he's obviously not of the same quality of uh, Daniel Munoz. Yeah. All right. Now let's get to the prediction. Now, before we do the prediction thing, what well, uh, can you t what is the head to head between the two nations? Actually, I'm just curious. Do you actually know? Um, hold up, let me look up. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, that, that I actually think it's important for us to see because I know, um, I know Colombia because I know you guys played Colombia, you know, like the last few couple of months. I know 2021, Arch defeated them on pens, 
Colombia defeated RG in 2019. Um, yeah, I don't think I don't think RG and Colombia played in 2016. No, no, we did not. Um, but okay, so the entire head to head um, has 25 wins for Argentina, eight draws, and nine wins for Colombia. So it's pretty lopsided when you look at it that way. Um, when you look at Copa America. Argentina like dominated the matchup early in the early days, like the 40s, the 50s, obviously. Back then, Colombia was nowhere near as a footballing team. You know, they were pretty similar to the level that you might expect from Bolivia nowadays, right? So like they, they really weren't that much of a threat. So looking back at those results, it's not really a surprise. But looking at the last few years, at least in the Copa America, Colombia has been putting up some respectable performances. Uh, in fact, in the Copa America, Argentina has not been in Colombia in regulation since 2007. So, like, it's been... Wow! Um, how, how long is that? Like, um, I'm trying to do years. the math. 17, 17 years? years? Right? Really? Wow, okay. Yeah, 17 years since Argentina has been in Colombia in regulation at the Copa America. Uh, back then, it was a 4-2 win in the group stage for Argentina. And since then... Uh, in 2011, it was a nil-nil draw. Argentina was playing at home for that one, mind you, and it was a nil-nil draw in the group stage. Uh, then in 2015, quarterfinals, nil-nil draw, Argentina advanced on penalties. And yeah, then, obviously, like you said, 2019, we lost 2 nil to them in the group stage. And in the last Copa America, 1-1 one, one draw, and we advanced on penalties again. So in the last few years, it has been pretty close in the head-to-head. -head, and you could say that in the last few meetings in the Copa America, it's actually Colombia, the ones who have... Uh, the better record you know they have like one win and three draws in the last four meetings the problem is that in two of those draws we actually advanced in penalties so that that is the caveat there but in the head-to-head -head, it seems like in the last few years it's been actually pretty close yeah i think the the thing for colombia is that if they want to win this game <clears throat> they can't i don't think they can win this in penalties i think penalties mm -hmm. is where uh already is going to come out i think so yeah, I think for Colombia, what would you say is their best chance of winning this game? What would you say? Their best chance of winning is, um, this is going to sound very stupid, but like finding a goal uh, out of uh, either Luis Diaz or James Rodriguez. I think that they are going to be the ones who either score or create the chance for one of their teammates. I think that John Cordova could be someone who could come up big. Uh, he's been pretty good with his hold-up play um, and also with his finishing. So... I expect him to be a threat up top, even though we have two great center backs who's gonna who are gonna make the life very difficult for him. But I think that Colombia needs to find a goal and then try to defend the same way that they did against Uruguay, and that would be like their road to victory. Um, I wouldn't discard Colombia uh, from the final if they go behind. Like I don't think this is a case where whoever scores first win. I think that there's potential for comebacks, uh, especially because. Argentina in the past, uh, we, we we know a thing or two about getting leads and then not being able to hold on to them. <laughs> yeah. And we saw it at this on Copa America as well. So it's not like if we score first, the game is over. But I feel like uh, for Colombia, obviously it would be great for them to go ahead in the game and then rely on their defensive prowess like they showed against Uruguay to try and hold on to that lead and kind of frustrate us until the end. So, uh, yeah, I think that would be the best chance for Colombia for sure. Yeah, I think, see, the thing is, like, actually, I want to ask you this question, then we'll get to prediction. Do you think RG have it in them to make a comeback? Because we, ha we haven't seen RG be in a losing position at all in this Copa America. Colombia have only been once against Brazil. So, mm -hmm. um, Yeah, I, that is a good question, because Argentina haven't gone behind a lot in, in the last few years. Uh, like I said, we only lost two games in the last, like, 61 and they were against Saudi Arabia and Uruguay. So I think that, yeah, we haven't seen Argentina go behind many, many times. And most times we weren't behind, we ended up losing the game. So I think that is a big question mark if we have it in us to actually make the comeback. I think we do because uh, we've shown a lot of character in a lot of games. And I think that the team is very composed and can always try to create those chances even if we go behind to try and go back in the game. But like, yeah, I, I think it's a genuine question if we have an in us. Uh, I cannot answer that question because if, it's very possible that we go behind in the game and we end up losing the final. But um, 
I, I think that there is possibility for us to make a comeback here. I wouldn't rule it out. Yeah, so it's going to be interesting. My prediction. It's a tough one because I, uh, before the start of the Copa America, I predicted Colombia to win the Copa America. And now, do I stick with that prediction or do I go against it? <laughs> it's a tricky one. But, you know, I think I'm going to stick with it because I feel like Colombia, I feel like this is destiny. I feel like what they've done this Copa America, that game against Uruguay for me was a champion win. The way they defended, the way they put everything on the line, like that's like a spear of a champion. And I feel like Colombia can give you, like, I think I said this in my videos, like, they can give you the attacking performance that you want, like against Panama. They can also give you ultimate defensive performance. And I feel like champion, you need both. You need to be great defensively and offensively. So I'm going to stick with Colombia. Obviously, Rank will be very mad if this happens, but um, I'm going to go with Colombia. Nah. <laughs> I, I think I'm going to say they won 2-1 extra time. I think 2-1 extra time. Um, I think it'll be 1-1 in full time and then 2-1 extra time. I think that's what I was going to say. All right. Yeah, ju just a reminder for people that there is actually extra time in this game because in the rest of the oh, Copa yeah, there's America, extra time. We, we didn't have extra time in the other games of the Copa America. The final has extra time. So yeah, that, that is a valid prediction. Um, I guess we kind of have a, a bit of a similar prediction in a way because my prediction is for this game to end 1-1, a bit of a repeat of 2021 because I think the game is going to end 1-1. And Divo Martinez is going to come up clutch again for us in the final and win us another trophy from the penalty spot. So I predict a uh, 1-1 one, one draw and Argentina wins some penalties. Uh, that's fair, man. That's fair. Uh, that'd be heartbreaking for Colombia. That'd be really it would. It would. But uh, the reason why I think this is going to be a draw, despite most people thinking that probably Argentina are going to be the favorites, is that Colombia have been great. They, they are on a 28 uh, unbeaten streak. A game unbeaten streak for a reason because they've been so consistent so good and just incredible at managing their leads and like you said amazing both offensively and defensively but argentina are the world cup champions for a reason i think that we are an amazing team ourselves so i think that even though we haven't shown our best level at this cup america we can rise up to the occasion for it being a final and so i think that there is just very little to separate these two teams and that it's going to be a very very close game so i i predict that draw and the problem with the draw, like you said, is that we have a game changer in penalties. And, you know, Camilo Vargas is a goalkeeper that I really respect, but I don't think he's at the same level as uh, Emi Martinez. And I think we have amazing penalty takers as well. So uh, if it gets to that point, I would expect us to win. I would be incredibly nervous. And, you know, then in the penalty shootout, anything can happen. But I would expect us to come out on top. So, yeah, that is going to be my prediction. I think the only nation, the only nation that can maybe be barging on penalties is maybe Croatia. <laughs> you say that, but then in the Nations League, uh, Croatia and Spain went to penalties, and Spain had like awful record in penalties, and Croatia had the best record on penalties. And who won? All right, that that's true. That's true. That maybe Egypt. Maybe Egypt. Maybe Egypt. Maybe Egypt can beat. <laughs> no way. No. <laughs> oh, actually, never mind. You, this Senegal can beat them on penalties too. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, man. I, I, whichever nation beats RGI on penalties, they, 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 they're they going to party all night. It's going to be crazy. It's going to be so... Mm. Like, I don't know. Like It's going to be so hard. Like Whichever nation beats RGI on penalties, that would be incredible. Because I don't know any other... I don't know any nation beside these two, honestly. Hmm. Yeah. So, but yeah, man. Uh, let's do quickly our goal scores, and I guess we'll round off. So my goal scores... Uh, for Argentina. See, uh, people are going to say Messi... But I think I heard the stat, and you could actually fact check this. I don't think Messi has ever scored against Colombia in a Copa America ever, right? No, no, he hasn't. So, yeah, uh, Messi is. I feel like the too obvious answer. I'm mm -hmm. going to say, I have a feeling that Latara might score. He might come off the bench and score a goal and push it to extra time. And then I think for Colombia, I'm going to say, I got a feeling they're going to score a set piece. I got a feeling. <laughs> <laughs> um, I guess I'll go with Thomas Sanchez <laughs> or maybe Lerma. Actually, I'll go with Lerma. I, I will go with Lerma. And then I have a feeling Colombia will score a, score a screamer extra time. I don't know who's going to score the screamer. Maybe Hamas or Luis Diaz. Actually, I'm going to say Luis Diaz. I think Luis Diaz is more likely. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. How about your goal scores? My goal scorers. 
You know, this is gonna sound very Disney Plus. Di Maria scores for Argentina. Ah, ah, yeah. And then um, <laughs> Colombia equalized through. Um, who do I have an agenda? Let's say, you know what? John Arias scores a goal for Colombia. Ah. <laughs> So, yeah, man, it's going to be the final. Remember, guys, we're going to have a live reaction after the final. Uh, Rank, you will be there no matter what, right? I'll be here no matter what. I don't know where I'm going to be. I don't know if I'm going <laughs> to be here in the apartment, if I'm going to be outside in the streets from my phone. It's going to be very scuffed if that happens, but uh, I'll be here. I'll, I'll try to be here for sure, yeah. Dude, if Arjun win it, you got to you gotta show, like, the scenes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll, try, I'll try to go to, to the streets, to the obelisco, like the obelisk, which is like the place where all the people congregate to celebrate whenever we win trophies. Maybe you've seen that in social media after we won the World Cup, the place was packed with people. I'll try to go there and try to not get my phone stolen or something, but <laughs> I think it's going to be pretty fun. Yeah, um, unfortunately, it is going to be a Sunday night, so I, um, I'm gonna, we're, gonna, we're not going to be able to stream for that long, so maybe an hour or something, uh, you know, so... Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, we'll we'll see what happens, man. We'll see what happens, man. Best of luck to Argentina. And as I say, I think it's called Vamos Argentina. I think that's what they say. Yeah, so. Vamos says come on. So yeah, yeah. And I don't know the phrase for Colombia, so you're gonna have to educate me on that because I don't know. So. It's gonna be the same. Like I guess it's Vamos Colombia, or Arriba Colombia, like big up as well. Yeah. So yeah, man. Thank you for joining Rank. Um, it's been great uh, having you on. And like I so said, guys, please subscribe to Rank's channel. We'll be doing a watch along with the final. Uh, I'm not gonna do. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna do a watch along because I wanna. I want to. I'm, yeah, I'm gonna. I'm gonna see if. I'm gonna probably see it by myself, and then maybe I'll record my reactions on YouTube. Maybe I'll record my reactions on YouTube or something. Uh, we'll see. Mm -hmm. uh, but we'll definitely. Uh, we'll definitely be here after the game, and everything like that. So, Rank, it's been a great Copa America, even though there's been a lot of uh, controversy going on with Bielsa <laughs> posts <laughs> with the USA stuff. <laughs> but uh, we're we're gonna we're gonna save them for another time. But yeah, any any final thoughts you right before round off? Um, yeah, it's been a, an amazing Copa America. You know, time flies because we've been waiting for the Copa America for so long, ever since the draw was made all the way back in March, I believe it was. Um, we've been waiting for it so long and now suddenly it's over. I think it was December, uh, actually. December, wow. So yeah, we, we've been waiting for the Copa America for a long, long time and now it's coming to an end. Uh, it's been a fantastic tournament. We've seen some great games, some fantastic goals. The intensity of the game has been insane as ever. Um, so yeah, you know, there, there was also a lot of controversy, like you said, but you know, that's kind of adds up to the spice, uh, as well. So it wouldn't be comfortable if it was perfect. So I think it's been a, a great Copa America, very entertaining and made the best win tomorrow. Oh, I, and I, one last thing I forgot to mention, I, I, I need to, I should, I should have mentioned this earlier. Shakira is me performing the final tomorrow. So <laughs> <laughs> let, let me, uh, people in the comments, uh, which buff is bigger? Inter Miami buff or Shakira buff? Like because I think those are gonna be like the two narratives. You know, like. Ah yes, ah oh, Shakira man. Uh, who who doesn't love Shakira? If you don't love Shakira, you're just sad. I'm sorry. Apparently Daniel Munoz because he didn't want to be in the final for that. Ah oh, Daniel Munoz. <laughs> Anyways, um, we're gonna round up here, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed uh, today's video. Please let me know your guys' thoughts in the comments below, guys. And like I said, man, thank you for rank for coming on. Subscribe to his channel. And of course, we're gonna have a post match reaction stream after the final. So I hope I can see you guys then, man. Remember guys to like and subscribe and peace out.